Welcome. In this video, we're going to put it all together. What does it mean to factor completely? So we have a bunch of different tools. We're going to kind of run down what you should be thinking when you're factoring completely. So the first thing, no matter what, if you're asked to factor, you should be looking for the greatest common factor. So that should be your first thing you look for always. Okay. Once you look for that greatest common factor, check to see if there are patterns to factor if possible. Uh, you don't necessarily have to take this step. However, it will make your factoring more efficient if you notice a pattern. So two terms, the only pattern we're looking for is a diff difference of squares. So if it's two things that are perfect squares that are being subtracted, this factors to a plus b times a minus b. Okay. Um, the other pattern we're looking for is a perfect square trinomial. Um, so perfect square trinomial, if we have a um, something squared plus or minus two plus something squared. So start by looking at your um, first and last terms. If they're both perfect squares, check to see if the middle term is two of the square roots multiplied together. If that's the case, this factors to the first thing, same sign as here, the second thing, squared. It's a perfect square trinomial. It comes from squaring a binomial. Okay. Um, again, that's one that if you recognize it, great. It'll make your factoring more efficient. If you don't, that doesn't mean all hope is lost. You can still factor using other tools. Okay. Um, if you have a trinomial, once you've checked for those, and your A value is 1, we're just looking for um, what multiplies to be C and adds to equal b, and then we can just put those things into our binomials. Put those values in here. Um, pay attention to your signs here, right? That can be really helpful. If you have a positive positive, both of these are positive because they multiply to be positive and they add to be a positive. Um, if you have a negative c, one's positive is one negative, you can figure out which one's which by looking at your b value. Um, whichever one matches your b value sign is the larger value. Um, if C is positive and B is negative, then they both have to be negative because they multiply to be a positive, add to be a negative. So keep those things in mind when you're looking at those numbers. Okay, then finally with our trinomials, if your A value is not one, we're gonna use what's called the ACB method. So you're gonna multiply A times C to get all your factors into one number. Then find a factor of that value that add to be your middle term. Rewrite that middle term as the summer difference using step three. So rewrite this using your factors there and then use your grouping, which comes to four terms, factor by grouping. So great, greatest common factor from your first two terms, greatest common factor from your second two terms, and then greatest common factor from the whole thing. Um, so really we're just doing greatest common factor, greatest common factor, greatest common factor. Hopefully you have that scale. Okay. And then make sure that no factor of two more more, fa more factor of two more terms can be factored again. Um, so you're checking for greatest common factors again, just a nice good check. Um, and then usually the only other one that we might end up with is this difference of squares. If you end up with a difference of squares as one of your factors, make sure you factor that again as well. Okay, let's try a few. Okay, so if we're just asked to factor completely, start greatest common factor. Greatest common factor there is 2y squared. And then we're left with y cubed minus 9. Okay, check to see if you can factor further. Oh, it almost looks like a difference of squares, but this isn't a square. So that's as far as we can go. We're done. That's my factored form. Okay, four terms. Still going to look for greatest common factor, but then you should already have a hint in your brain that you have four terms. You're looking for groups. Okay, no greatest common factor, so we're going to factor out our groups. We get 4x squared, uh, x plus 1, and negative 25, x plus 1. They both have an x plus 1, and we're left with 4x squared minus 25. Check your factors. No greatest common factor. Ooh, that's a difference of squares. This is 2x squared, and this is 5 squared. So this factors to 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. Check again. Looks like we're good. All done. 
Okay, two more examples here. So we're looking at, hey, greatest common factor, 4x to the fourth, 18, 10x squared. They all have a factor of two. They all have a factor of x squared. So we're left with 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. Okay, not a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to use ACB. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Factors of negative 10 that add to be negative 9 would be 1 and negative 10. So now I'm going to keep that 2x squared that I factored out and rewrite 2x squared, this negative 9, as minus 10x plus x. You could do it the other way too. That's totally fine as long as that's still equal. Okay. Now we have four terms, so we're grouping. Greatest common factor here is 2x, and we're left with x minus 5. Ooh, that matches this, so I'm just going to pull out a 1 here, x minus 5. Okay, now these two both have x minus 5, and we're left with 2x plus 1. Bring Brown your 2x squared. Check. Can't factor those further. So we're done. Okay, hey, last one here, 3x to the fifth, 12x to the fourth, negative 63x to the third. Ooh, they all have a three and they all have x to the third. So x to the third, I'm left with x squared minus 4x minus 21. Okay, now I have an a value of 1, so I'm just looking for factors of negative one, 21 that add to be negative 4. It's, they multiply to be a negative, so one's negative, one's positive. They add to be a negative, so the bigger one's negative. So I'm looking at factors of negative 21, and I want them to add up to be negative 4. So 1 and negative 21 doesn't work, and 3 and negative 7, that's the winner. So since my a value is just 1, I can just throw those right into plus 3 minus 7. Now, you could write it out just like with our grouping and then group from there, um, but you're going to end up the same place. So a little bit more efficient to jump right to your factors. Okay, um, that is all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching.